Test your electronics smarts. Guess the electronic parts. Today, I have many different electronic parts that aren't so common, and some are common, and you can guess at what their function is. You may even know what their function is. So I'll show you the part, I'll give you some time to figure it out, and then I'll explain exactly what the part does. And some of them will even power up. I'll show you what they do. So I have many different devices to show you today, and you can guess at all of them. So let's get started. This is the first device we're gonna look at today. What do you think this thing is? So it has a glass tube on this side. As you can see, there's an evacuation point, so they've drawn a vacuum in here. There's another glass tube on this side. And this one joins right here. So this one here carries through, and this one here is joined in. You can see it says 50 ohms down here. You have two contacts on this side. I will cover the name up so that you can't see the name. And that's what it looks like on that side right there. So what do you think this thing is? If you'd like to figure it out, pause the video right now if you need some time to stare at this and figure out exactly what it is. And in a moment, I will tell you exactly what it is and I'll also power it up. All right, so this is what this is. It's a very high voltage relay. So high that they drew a vacuum and they called it Kilovac. Well, that's the actual company there. So I'll show you exactly how this thing works. So I'll put this thing down and I'll attach a power supply to this. I'll zoom on into the contacts and we'll take a look. All right, keep an eye on that little area right there and you'll see the contact move back and forth. So from this side to this side. So basically it'll switch from here to this side or from here to that side. So here we go. Hopefully you can see this. I'll just hold this steady. Pretty loud little device. So there you go, high voltage relay, way up in the kilovolts. So lots of different manufacturers made these. So this one here again is made by Kilovac. This one here is an iMac version, same thing, except you can't see any movement in this one. This one's kind of painted up. Same kind of idea, mounts a little bit differently. This would you know, mount to a frame or something like that. So high voltage relays, did you guess it? You let me know in the comments below. Let's take a look at another device. Here's the next electronic device to take a guess at. What do you think this is? It's large and very heavy. I'll give you a hint. There's a much, much smaller version of this that's very common. And they're seen quite often. It looks almost identical to this, but much, much smaller. So if you need a moment to take a look at that and try and figure out what it is, you can pause the video now. And in a moment, I will tell you exactly what this is. All right, so here's a smaller version of that. Many of you have probably seen these in radios and all sorts of different types of test equipment, ham radio gear and all that kind of stuff. It's a little choke or inductor if you like. That's a very, very big version of this designed to handle a lot of current. So lots of copper here. And let's take a measurement. Let's see, there are two sections and you can link them together or do whatever you like here. So that's why there's four posts. So there's two sections and two sections. So we'll turn this on and see what two sections of this measure. So 6.5 millihenries. Lots of copper in there. That's for two sections. That's not looking at these two over here. So there you have it. Really, really 
large inductor. Let's take a look at another device. Here's a more modern device with two leads on the bottom. Care to guess at what this is? Or you may know what this is. If you need to pause the video and stare at it for a moment and take your guess, do that now and I'll explain what it is in just a second. All right, so this device is known as a Veractor diode or a tuning diode. And what really gives it away is it's in a TO92 style package missing one lead on the bottom. So if this was a 2N product, say it was a transistor or something like that, it would be missing the base lead on the bottom. So these are very common in FM tuners and in ham radio equipment and you know some oscillator circuits. What a Veractor diode is, or a tuning diode if you like, what it is is it's a diode that acts like a capacitor. So in short, by varying the voltage to this device, you can vary the capacitance. And by varying the capacitance, if it's in an oscillator circuit, you can vary the frequency of an oscillator. That's what this thing is. So there you have it. Whenever you see a TO92 package looking device with a missing lead in the center, it's a very, very good chance that you're dealing with a Veractor diode. How are you doing so far? Did you guess the previous devices? If you did, you're doing extremely well. If you haven't, no big deal. Hang around this channel and pretty soon you'll be an expert at electronics. It's just that simple. Hang around here and you will learn through osmosis. There you go. How do you like that for a word? So I'll cover the name up on the side because it'll pretty much give it away if I don't. And on the other side, there's a big tag, which you know pretty much just throws the name right at you. So uh, the other side looks just like this side right here. Screws on it and everything just like that. So if you need a moment to stare at this and try and figure out exactly what this is, do that now and in just a moment I'll tell you exactly what it is. All right, this is a big mica capacitor and these are found in broadcast transmitters or any place that there's you know relatively large RF. It has some pretty extreme ratings, 12 amps at 3 megahertz and the same at 1 megahertz and then it's derated a little bit at 300 kilocycles. So rated at 6 kV and its capacitance is 0 0.002 microfarad, so pretty stout capacitor. Mostly found in lower frequency service. So there you have it. Good as a blocking cap as well. Things like that. But anyways, that's what it is. A very large capacitor. I have an entire explanation of many, many different capacitors on Patreon. Actually, here's the, the picture of the video. So all of those capacitors you see are explained on Patreon in detail. If you're interested in that, you might want to check out my ongoing electronics course there. So there you have it. All right, so let's take a look at the next device. Here's a fun one. You're probably saying, Paul, this is getting too easy. Well, just hold on a moment. So there we go. What is this thing? And here's the trick question. How many positions is it? I bet you've never seen one of these before. And I'll show you why in just a moment. So take a guess. If you need a moment, pause the video now. And in just a moment, I'll tell you exactly what this is. All right. First of all, it's pretty obvious that it's a switch, right? A bat handled toggle switch is usually what they're known as. But here's the trick. How many positions is this switch? Did you guess at that? So one, two, three, four. It's a four position bat handled toggle switch. Kind of reminds me a bit of a gear shifter in a car. So kind of neat. Don't see those every day, do you? Here's the next device. What do you think this is right here? Do 
If you need to pause the video for a moment, take a look, do that now, and I'll explain this in just a moment. This is a 116 watt, 3100 ohm resistor. It's a mighty large resistor. And it gets mighty toasty. So that's what this is. Very, very large resistor and they clip into clips. These are often mistaken as large fuses, but it is in fact a resistor. Next device, right here. What do you think that is? You need to take a look at this for a moment. You can pause the video and look at it and I'll explain what it is in just a moment. This is known as a tube stir. And it's a modern or solid state vacuum tube replacement. So you would remove a tube, for example, say a 6AU6 or something like that and plug this in. So they make these for all sorts of different, you know, vacuum tube, 6AU6, 6AK5s, um, 6AL5 is an easy one because it's two diodes, but things like that. So if you ever open up an older device and you see a bunch of these things plugged in where a vacuum tube is supposed to be, these things are known as tube stirs. Next device, what is this? Brand new, this one is. Right out of the box. You need to stare at it for a moment, do that now, and I'll tell you what it is in just a moment. This is a filament choke. So these are often used in amplifiers, in large amplifiers, when the amplifier is run in a grounded grid configuration. So you feed the RF to the filament section. So basically what this does is it stops the RF from going back to the filament supply. That's what this thing is. So basically another choke or inductor if you prefer. Really big wires designed for very high current. Lots of the times in transmitting service, the vacuum tubes, the filaments of the vacuum tubes draw a lot of current, so it needs to be very, very large. This is a ferrite rod in the center. And two for one. What are these two devices right here? You need to pause the video and look at them for a moment. Do that now and I'll explain what they are. This is a capacitor. Capacitors like this are usually only a couple picofarad. So this one here is 2.2 it looks like. 2.2 pico. Usually found in tuners and you know small transmitters, things like that. And this is an inductor. So whenever you look at modern devices that are green bodied, so if you come across a device that looks like a resistor, like this one does, this looks like an older Allen Bradley style resistor. The newer resistors, you know, they, they kind of look like a peanut, right? If you come across a green peanut style looking device, there's a really good chance that it's an inductor. So the green body usually indicates that, a lighter green body. And this, again, looks like a small Allen Bradley resistor, but it's not. This is actually a capacitor. Again, found in tuners and small transmitters and, again, in RF service, wherever you really need, uh, you know, a few picofarad and, um, you know, in a small package like that. So how did you do? Let me know in the comments below. Are you interested in learning more about electronics, both modern and antique alike? I teach electronics in a way that's very easy to understand, complete with circuits for you to build, and at this point, 200 videos for you to learn from. 
I have a very affordable electronics course on Patreon. You're definitely going to want to check that out. I also share many of my inventions there, which you've probably seen on the internet and on this channel, complete with circuit designs, the layouts and all the instructions to put these inventions together and just specific pieces of test equipment to make your repairs and troubleshooting all that much easier. There's lots of great stuff there. Definitely check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on one of those links, it'll take you right there. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and definitely hang around. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and tap that bell symbol. That way you'll be notified as soon as I post a brand new video. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.